In this video, I'm going to show you how to replace the front ABS sensor on this Ford F-150, so let's get started. Let's remove the wheel. You would want to use a 21 millimeter socket if your lug nuts are swollen like mine because underneath the chrome cap it rusted, you would want to use a 22. <laughs> and remove the wheel. Now with the wheel off from the back side, unclip the ABS wire from this. Let's also unbolt the ABS wire from the knuckle with an eight millimeter socket. If it feels like it's going to break, work it back and forth because you don't want this breaking inside the knuckle. I've already done this, but I'm gonna spray it again with a bunch of rust penetrant. Hopefully that'll work its way in there and help me loosen this up a little bit easier and without breaking it. There it is, pull this off, follow the ABS wire up and unclip it from where it's secured onto the frame. Just like this, follow it up even more. It's clipped right here next to the control arm. Remove it from this retainer as well. I'm going to follow the ABS sensor all the way up here on the fender liner and unplug it. There's a clip on the back side. Press it and slide it out of its connector. Okay, just pop it out. Oh, there we go. That's why it's not coming out. A lot of times these get pretty full of debris here. Now you can pull the wire down. Now have a bungee cord ready so you can tie the caliper and bracket assembly out of the way. We're taking off the whole thing as a unit. Take this 18 millimeter bolt out as well as this one down here. Those will take off the caliper bracket off of the knuckle directly. With one off, leave it on a few threads so that you can have the caliper supported while you take off the other one. Now take both off, pull it off of the rotor, remove your rotor. If yours is stuck on because of rust, mine's not because it's new, but if it is and you're reusing it, then tap between the lug studs, that should break it free off the hub, but just make sure you don't damage the studs. With the ABS wire unplugged and unclipped on the wheel bearing side, you'll see a five millimeter Allen. Break that free, remove it, and then the ABS sensor should pull right out. Now, this one is not rusty. A lot of times they do get rusty. Hopefully they're not seized in there. They shouldn't be. With a little bit of wiggling, it should come right out. But sometimes you do have to spray them down with rust penetrant and wiggle them back and forth a little bit to work that rust penetrant in there. Looks like I need some pliers so I can pull it out of there. Grab it gently. Don't do any sideways motions like this. Don't twist it. Don't bend it. All you want to do is twist it back and forth like this. If you bend it, the sensor will break internally. At this point, try to get that wire from behind the backing plate, pull it up and out, and there it is. There's the ABS sensor. When it comes time to mounting the new one, make sure the mounting area is clean. If it isn't, stick a rag down in the hole and then scrape off any debris that is here. Take the new ABS sensor, slide it down in position, Stick the wire behind the backing plate, just like that. Line it up, press it down by hand. Make sure that the O-ring seats itself fully. You don't wanna press it down with the bolt and then it goes crooked at an angle because the O-ring isn't seated down. There we go, that just went in. So at this point we can put the bolt back in. Make sure that's centered. And this being very small, once the bolt bottoms out, just give it an extra eighth of a turn at most. Make it snug, and that's it. Let's reconnect it. I have a new hub here. If you still have your old one, go ahead and clean it up so that these two ridges right here are nice and smooth. There's no buildup, no rust, no debris on them. And then we'll go ahead and coat them with any C's. And I will do that regardless of whether it's a new or an old hub. I also have a new rotor. If you don't have a new rotor, make sure the backside is clean like this one. Sand it down if necessary. Make sure you don't take off too much material though. And then slide it on. It's important that these two sit perfectly flat up against each other. And to secure this, I'm gonna use a lug nut to clamp it on. You don't have to make this very tight. Just put it on here by hand so it can hold the rotor and prevent it from falling off. If it falls off and rust gets behind here, it'll sit crooked once it finally gets tightened down and then you'll have some issues driving down the road, especially at higher speeds. Now let's get the caliper over the rotor, slide it on, start in the two caliper bolts, 
bottom these out and then torque them. The torque for these two is 136 foot pounds. Start the ABS wire in. Okay, bottom that out, make sure it's snug. Over here, clip this into the brake hose retainer. Follow the ABS wire and clip this into this bracket over here. Run it behind this brake line. There was one more retainer for it. That has to clip in right over here next to the vacuum hose. And the last part is to plug it in. Make sure that clicks and secure the connector onto the fender liner right there. Let's get the wheel on. Start on all six of your lug nuts, bottom them out, and torque them to 150 foot-pounds in a cross pattern. There you have it. Take it for a road test. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.